Hi, this is Thomas from Apex Game Tools. In this video, we're going to look at how you can use the load balancer to schedule actions in your game. So, as you can see, we have a game object where I've attached the load balancer component, and on there, you can see we have two load balancers. We have the default load balancer, which will always be there, and then I have this extra load balancer that I've added myself. So, the first thing we're going to look at is how you can actually add additional load balancers if you need them. And this, as you can see, is very simple. You simply derive a class from load balancer. This is the one that defines the default load balancer. And then you create a number uh, of static fields that defines additional load balancers. In this case, we have this extra load balancer. It is defined with the default options. Um, going back to Unity, you can see it has these. These are the options that I'm talking about. Um, the default, for instance, update interval. Um, every 0.1 seconds, if you don't specify uh, an update interval, it will use this as the default update interval. Now you can of course change this if you want um, by changing um, the constructor arguments. Um, but just um, one thing to note is that this is a static field, so in order for Unity to pick this up during recompilation when you already have uh, the component added, um, you actually need instead to remove the component first um, then you can make these changes to the static property so I'm going to go with this I'm simply changing the default update interval to 0.2 seconds and I don't want it to auto adjust and back into Unity I am going to let it recompile and then I'm going to add the load balancer back again and now it has changed the update interval to 0.2 seconds instead so now these are just the defaults. So you, if I mean you can change this when you add stuff to the load balancer, um, but if you want to change the default, this is how you do it. So next, let's let's look how we actually use these uh, load balancers to schedule up actions. We're going to look at two different types of actions. We're going to look at the three built-in actions, and then we're going to look at how you create your own custom actions. So first, the build-in actions. There are three. Um, the first of which is called the one-time action. The one-time action, uh, it executes once, um, and then it leaves the load balancer. So it does not repeat. As you can see, it's quite simple to define. Um, it takes an action um, with a float argument. Um, this is the delta time. That means basically the time this action spent in the load balancer before getting executed and you can use that to whatever you want uh, in your actions um, but that's it of course now this example I use uh, an anonymous method as you can see just a debug log um, to the console you can of course also implement actual methods on your classes and pass them to the action if you want to do that instead if you have I mean if you pro you probably will have some actions that are more uh, advanced than this, then uh, you might want to implement them as actual methods instead of anonymous method anonymous methods. Anyway, uh, as you can see, um, to load uh, or sorry to add these to the load balancer, I'm simply calling load balancer default load balancer add and then the action. Uh, and in this case, I'm just going to use the default load balancer. This is the simplest way to add an action um, using the default options on the load balancer. So if we see that in action, and when I press the key that I assigned to this, um, as you can see, my action executed. It spent um, 0 0.01 seconds in the load balancer before getting executed. Um, basically that is a frame, um, so it got executed right away on the next frame. This is of course up to the load balancer how uh, pressed it is for time, um, when it will execute, but normally it will just execute these right away unless you specify otherwise. Now you can specify otherwise because you can tell the load balancer to use an interval other than the default interval. But as we've seen, uh, as for one-time actions, the interval doesn't really have any influence because it is just executed once, it is not repeated. Um, we can however use the interval, um, let's say that I say 0 0.5 as the interval, and then I tell it to delay the first update. 
in this case it will use the interval um, to delay the first update. So in this case we would expect our action to actually wait half a second before it executes. And hopefully that is exactly what it does. And there we go, as you can see, executes after half a second. So that's it for the one-time action. Next up we have the repeatable action. And it's very similar. Um, again, it takes in this case not an action but a function uh, because we want a boolean return value to control whether or not the repeatable action will continue to repeat. Um, so this is the implementation similar to the other one on the one-time action and then we return a boolean to control whether or not we, st we continue to repeat. So as long as the counter is um, below 5 um, it's going to, s to continue repeating. Um, so basically this is going to repeat six times because it starts at zero. And then I just load it to the load balancer the same way I as, I as I did with the one-time action. So seeing that in action as you can see we have uh, this is then executed uh, and it's now using the default delay as you can see it's using one po uh, 0 0.1 because that is the default delay of um, of the default load balancer and we use the, the uh, simplest way to add our action. Of course I could also add a delay to this one for instance let's say oops, 0 0.3 seconds instead um, and then that would be, be what we will see uh, when we start. Repeatable action, it will now take three seconds in between each of the um, executions. Obviously not the first one because we didn't ask it to delay the first update, so the first update will simply come as soon as it can. So that's it for the repeatable action. And finally we have something called the long-running action. The long-running action is to control methods that will take a long time to run and could impact the, the frame rate um, if allowed to just run on their own. Instead you can then schedule these on the load balancer and it will control um, how long they run so they will actually spread out their load over several frames. Um, so as you can see this is a little bit different than the others because we are not using anonymous methods. We don't have to use that in the others but in this case we can't really because we this one needs to return an I enumerator. Um, and it also takes, as you can see, as an argument, it takes an argument stating how many milliseconds per frame that we will allow this running action to use. So we've said, okay, I can live with using 10 seconds, sorry, 10 milliseconds per frame until this long-running method is done. And again, I'm going to load it into my load balancer the exact same way as uh, I did the others. And then we have this long-running method. Obviously, this is super uh, simple, but the important part to take away from this is that it is an enumerator, so it, it's very similar to a coroutine. You simply uh, yield return null for each um, step in your method uh, and then it will run as many steps of that method that it can within um, the time you specify. So it will run as many of these as it can within 10 milliseconds per frame and then it will run until it finishes. So let's see that in action. Um, we start it up again and actually we should probably use the profiler and look at that. So when I start my action can see it starts updating and it does that over quite a few frames and then it says it's done. Okay, So this ensures that we keep uh, our frame rate at the desired level. So that's it for these um, standard actions. Now of course all of these I added these to the default load balancer. I could have used uh, our custom load balancer instead and we would have had the exact same um, experience. Um, we can just try and do that. Again on my custom load balancer I still have access to my default load balancer because it derives from 
um, the basic load balancer but I also have access to my extra load balancer if I want to use that one instead and I can do that um, in this case it will have absolutely no difference because um, the long running action doesn't really use a delay um, or an interval um, but just to see that it actually works um, to start it again and as you can see over here on the performance visualizer it is running using 10 milliseconds per frame and then it again stops after looping through all of the method so finally um, let's look at how you create your own actions to create your own action what you need to do is implement this interface called I load balanced and I've already done that in this as you can see um, set it up pretty similar to the others um, now the I load, I load balance interface contains uh, one property and one method that you need to implement repeat controls if it repeats this can of course be something that you can set this uh, at a wake or whatever uh, or you can also just set it dynamically uh, at some point uh, during the execution of your action and then it has this execute method um, that is where you actually execute what you need to do and then as you can see on enable I add myself in this case because I this class is an I load balanced it adds itself to the load balancer in this case I'm gonna add it with a 0.3 interval and then it disables itself on disable now uh, for the execute um, just to go through what that does uh, and the arguments and the return, va return value of that um, this is obviously called every time uh, the load balancer decides that it is ready to run this action um, and then it as with the other actions it gets a delta time which means how long did it sit in the load balancer since the last execution and then it has a next interval which is basically just the default interval um, of this type um, of action so you can use that uh, in uh, your execution and then when you return from this method you should return either null which will simply indicate that the action should execute at the given interval in this case that will be uh, 0.3 seconds just using the default or you can also um, return a custom interval so that it, ret it ret the next execution will be run after this many so in this case we've just randomized it between 0.2 and 1 second um, so let's see how that works um, I am going to add that behavior to this component here oh, sorry to this game object so when I start it uh, as you can see it then just starts updating and it just repeats um, in this case repeats forever because we are not setting repeat to false at any point and as you can see it randomizes um, how long it sits on the load balancer before the next so the interval is actually not 0.3 it is just randomized each time now we could change that as I said we can set this to null and I could also do something about the repeat I could change this at some point along the way um, to false at which time uh, the, this action would then stop executing um, just to show this that now we actually just have it standardized so that now it actually uses the default delay of 0.3 seconds All right so that was it about using uh, the load balancer to schedule actions